Russ Stingley runs a cow-calf operation in Kittitas, Washington, on rangeland that is under checkerboard ownership, including parcels owned by Puget Sound Energy, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Washington Department of Natural Resources. Well, our operation kind of consists of me and my boys, my daughter. We, we all, between the, all of us, we run about 850 cows. And uh, um, the range ground consists of about 25,000 acres. We have some ownership of our own, but uh, most of it's leased ground that uh, spread out over the Kittas Valley. Stingley manages grazing under a Coordinated Resource Management, or CRM, plan, which was developed by consensus among a voluntary coalition that includes the Stingley family, the landowners, and other local stakeholders, diverse partners who did not originally have a history of working collaboratively. Together, partners plan for multiple goals, including cattle production, wildlife habitat, and wildfire risk reduction. We're here to generate renewable energy. We're the experts in the electrical field, but when it comes to managing the landscape, we really need those partnerships to help us manage going forward. Early on in the development process of the wind farm, we understood that traditional uses of the land was really important to the local community, and we wanted to make sure we committed to continuing with those traditional land uses and partner with um, the locals on implementing a, a more sustainable grazing plan throughout the facility that balanced the needs of both the, the grazing and wildlife and wildlife habitat. Based on the terms of the Coordinated Resource Management Plan, the Stingleys have a lower stocking rate than is usual for ranchers in their area. Stingley is managing with short grazing periods, low impact on plants and soil, and high post-grazing residual. Together, these strategies have supported high plant biodiversity and good animal health. We backed the numbers off almost half when we took it over and uh, to try to improve it some, which did help. Describe the balancing act between like what's good for the ground and what's good for the cow. We're always worried about the cow, but you know, it is, you can't just uh, take everything from the ground either because, I mean, you need this again next year. It's not ideal for the cow, but she's doing fine. You know, she still looks good. Um, we'll leave a little bit for the, the grass and hopefully, you know, kind of put some in the bank for next year. We had uh, the CRM state tour out here, you know, and we went to a spring to the north here and one of the guys asked, uh, uh, when will you graze this pasture? And I said, well, we just moved cows out three days before that, you know. So uh, it's obvious it's not overgrazed when you have those kind of comments, you know. The Stingleys have also improved distribution of cattle across the landscape by installing fencing and redeveloping water points with cost share from Puget Sound Energy, and by strategically locating salt, supplemental protein, and hauled water. You know, we, we put in a lot of fence, which improved the ground as far as being able to utilize it better. By having more pastures, your rotation works better. The pines used to be one pasture. That pasture is actually three pastures now, so you can go early three times, you know, which you're back in the original rotation, where when it was one pasture, you only got to use that range ground uh, early spring once out of three years. I think there's 26 springs we've redeveloped because uh, if your water's all in one place, that's where the cattle tend to be. So we've tried to develop as many springs and, as possible out here to spread cattle out, you know. And by using salt and we haul water, moving water tanks to the outlying areas to pull cattle away from the other troughs helps a lot in this, this country out here. Grazing under a coordinated resource management plan is not without its challenges, including having to move cattle between pastures in a more complex pattern than previously. Overall, this leads to higher production costs, though manageable enough that the Stingleys can still run a profitable business. You know, uh, like from here to Whiskey Gym, we're looking at two miles, but we've had to go from here down to Park. Uh, so it's probably eight miles 
that way, you know, and sometimes it's not the, where they want to go. And, the, and then another uh, drawback when you jump pastures like that, uh, you know, if you're just moving from one pasture to next, you can push cows through and leave the gate open. And if the cow don't have its calf, she'll go back and get it that night, or the calf will follow. So they stay paired up. Where we jump now, like if we leave Whiskey Gym and come over here, uh, sometimes we'll orphan calves, you know, even though we, we try to go back and find them in that. Managing under the Coordinated Resource Management Plan has improved the condition and resilience of the vegetation. The Stingleys were able to maintain stocking rates even during a statewide drought in 2015, with a combination of healthy grass stands, supplemental protein, and providing water. Meanwhile, the Coordinated Management Plan has also led to documented habitat improvements. And despite the logistical challenges, the Stingleys feel like the Coordinated Resource Management Plan has given them access to land that they wouldn't otherwise be able to graze so that they can maintain a way of life that they are passionate about. Without it, uh, you, the enjoyment part, I mean, that's kind of a way of life that we love doing out here. So, uh, you know, you, you take away the candy, sometimes the other part's not that good, you know. We have an abundance of wildlife species throughout the facility. We have Rocky Mountain elk, we have mule deer, we have reptiles, we have bear and cougar, and we have an abundance of bird life, including sage grouse. We have public access, recreation, grazing, hunting, um, and so having that balance was really important to PSE, and we believe we've achieved that balance. You know, there was, there is some headaches involved in this, but you don't have to concede that much to gain a whole bunch. Everybody basically has the same goal on a different, you know, how they go about it. And I think these agencies are gonna like um, see that it's working out here, you know, and like the wildlife's doing good, the birds are doing good, you know, the grass is doing good and they're getting their objectives met. So I think it'll hopefully, you know, in the next five, 10 years, a lot of this uh, opens up other ground for other people even. Mm -hmm.